Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Looks kind of dark there. I hope you can see me clearly. It's Saturday morning. And I'm going to fix my hair here. <laughs> uh, it's Saturday morning. And I wanted to share with you something that kind of opened my eyes up a little bit about how people believe and why we're not getting what the blood of Jesus paid for us to have, okay? There's an argument that I guess I used to also put forth. Um, the Word of God says that the enemy is under our feet and nothing shall by any means hurt us. So some people say, um, you know, don't you apply the blood of Jesus to things? Because um, um, I was talking about going to the courts of heaven and uh, why you go to the courts of heaven, why, how Satan is a legalist, <clears throat> and how he will cause you to not have what the blood of Jesus says that you can have. And one of my friends said, well, you don't have to go to the court of heaven to get rid of generational curses, uh, get rid of sins and stuff, because the blood of Jesus takes care of it. And I didn't want to argue because sometimes people just want to have a certain mindset and <clears throat> their goal is to argue or sometimes they have a certain mindset and it's just not worth arguing because it'll take them months or weeks and lots of reading and understanding and revelation from God to, to get it. So you don't want to try to teach somebody. You just want to say, okay, whatever. But that made me think this is making any sense. It made me think that oftentimes the Word of God says what we have, but we aren't living it. In other words, by the stripes of Jesus we have been healed. Well, how many of you and us are sick? It's not manifested. Um, the Word of God says that I wish that all people would be saved. How many people out of that all are saved? Some go to hell. So, the reason that we have to go to the courts of heaven to get what legally belongs to us and, and what stops us and prevents us from getting what the blood of Jesus paid for us to have is things, Satan is a, a, is a legalist, so what he'll do is he will try to find anything in our life that creates a loophole. You know, by grace we have been forgiven for all of our sins for, on God's side of the story. But on the devil's side of the story, anything that was once illegal or once was the law in or is supposedly what we think might be the law, anything that the devil thinks he can have a loophole in, legal, he's a legalist that he's going to go after. So if you are like most people, most people have so much generational sins. Uh, the Word of God says that the sins of the parents are passed down. And yes, the blood of Jesus covers it. But Jesus said, by the stripes of Jesus, you're healed. And yes, the blood of Jesus covers it. But we have to take it. Just because the word of God says it doesn't mean it's automatically ours. We have to receive it. We have to take it. We have to fight for it. Because the devil is trying to convince us with circumstances, events, how our body feels, uh, what just happened, whatever, that what the Word of God says isn't true. He brings all these facts against us. So sometimes when we're not getting an answer to our prayers, we have to take it to the courts of heaven. And we have to come to the just judge, which is our Father God, and our uh, our attorney, which is Jesus. It's, it's a fixed trial there on our side. And when we do that, the blood of Jesus then is, uh, you know, we plead guilty to the sin, whether we're guilty or not. We don't argue with our adversary, our accuser, and we plead guilty whether we're guilty or not. We plead guilty to the individual sins and of our nation or of our, our nationality or our um, people group or our generation. And as we plead guilty and just agree with the adversary, no arguing, no fighting, no screaming, no binding, what we are actually doing in this court is loosening ourselves off of covenants that we've made in the, with the devil in the past and binding God's word to us, uh, having a binding contract. It's, it's just like heaven's court is like uh, earth's court. 
And when you pray and you aren't getting results, the best thing to do is to take it to the courts of heaven. There is something that Satan found a loophole, a legal thing in your past, which is preventing you to have it. So my purpose right now isn't all isn't to uh, talk about the courts of heaven so much as to show you that yes, the blood of Jesus paid for us to have it, and yes, our sins are forgiven according to God and by the grace of God. But on the devil's side, he doesn't care about grace. He doesn't care about uh, the fact that things are forgiven. All he cares about is there's a loophole there. He thinks that he can get in and he can keep us from getting what God has for us. And again, let me point out that salvation is for everyone. Jesus died for everyone to be saved, but not everyone's going to get saved because you have to take it. You have to receive it. You have to believe it. Uh, and healing, Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus, we have been healed. Healing is for everyone, sinner and saint alike. Jesus paid the price for, for everyone to be healthy, whole, and healed. But not everybody is going to receive it. If I said, here's a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars, you are not going to get my hundred dollars unless you reach through the phone and take it from me. And the same thing is with everything that the blood of Jesus paid for us to have. And you got to remember, it is not God keeping us from getting it. So you see, Jesus paid the price for us to be healthy, prosperous, rich, powerful, uh, have power over all the enemy, um, to, to visit heaven, to have a supernatural relationship with God, all this stuff. But the devil is keeping us from this and trying to deceive us and keeping it from manifesting in our life. Because if we don't know, if the whole world doesn't know that Jesus died for their sins and paid the price for our sins and took us back to a relationship with the Father, then they're not going to get saved. If the whole world does not know that Jesus took every sickness and every disease on himself so they could be healed, then people are going to die of cancer. People are going to die of sicknesses and diseases, Christian and non-Christian. It was for everybody. But you can't have it unless you, first of all, are taught it. Second of all, receive it. And third of all, believe it. And the same thing goes for everything the blood of Jesus paid for us to have. It's Jesus' harvest. We are healed, have salvation, have prosperity, have supernatural power because Jesus sowed that so that we could reap the harvest. So essentially, when we are receiving everything the blood and body of Jesus paid for us to have, we are receiving the harvest of Jesus. And Jesus didn't pay that price and shed his blood and go through, have his guts ripped out and his face all smashed and his spirit aside and everything, all that, so that we could be sick. He didn't have God turn away from him so that God turns away from us. Okay? It, it's, it's ours. We just have to take it. And sometimes... We have to take it by going to the courts of heaven. So, uh, the main thing that I'm saying here is, yes, nothing shall by any means hurt us according to the word of God. But, it does hurt us. We do get in accidents. We do get sick. We do um, have trauma. It don't say that that's the way that God wants us to die because we were never supposed to die. Uh, there are plenty of saints in the Bible that were taken to heaven without dying. So it wasn't God's will that, okay, we have to die somehow. We have to die of sickness. We can die in our sleep. That's how I plan on dying in my sleep when I choose to, when I'm older, much, much older. Uh, but what I'm saying is it belongs to us. It's Jesus' harvest that he gave to us. He's not withholding it from us. He wants us to have it. He wants the whole world to have it, but we got to take it. And sometimes we have to fight for it. If we want... Um, if we, I believe strongly in grace. I'm one of the grace preachers, but I'm also one of these preachers that we have to repent, not for the sake of God. We repent because we're in a relationship with Jesus Christ and we're in love with him. And we're sorry for something stupid that we did that hurt him and that could hurt us, just like your spouse. But we also need to repent because repentance closes the door to the enemy. God wants us to repent out of a relationship with, with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so the devil can't hurt us. He doesn't want us re to repent because it's the right thing to do. Because we're following the law. 
He wants us to repent because he knows that it can kill us if we don't. And that the devil can kill, steal, and destroy us and opens doors to us being hurt if we don't. And when we talk about repenting, it simply means to change your mind. Stop doing it. Change your mind. Turn around. Go in the opposite direction. And so, uh, I just want to share with you that this is, it's all, it's available for everybody. We just got to take it. We just got to receive it. We just got to believe it and not allow the devil to go and find openings. So you want to learn about the courts of heaven. You want to go to heaven uh, and you want to, because we're seated in heavenly places and that heavenly places we're seated in is a place of kingdomship, a place of authority and dominion because we are kings on the earth. And we are to judge our history, our generational curses. We are to, to take it to court and allow God to judge it. And then plead guilty and cover it with the blood of Jesus. And it's really, really awesome when you begin to do this because you begin to see that many of the things that happened in your childhood and in your history affect the way you think and believe in what's happening in your life today. It has Lots of traumas and surgeries have also opened the door to the enemy to uh, he uses those weak spots to take advantage of us. So you want to um, go back and shut the doors of, of all those things and you want to go back in your generation and ask the Holy Spirit. And this is all led by the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you uh, generational curses. I mean, I have learned so much of my history by going to the courts of heaven and realizing how much trash is back there and how it is affecting me today and going back and asking the Holy Spirit to reveal to me why this emotion is connected with a certain events and how the a, a familiar spirit or unclean spirit came into my life uh, and began to harass me and put stuff on me because of that history so there's some um, I'm gonna be trying I'm gonna be in one of my angel books I'm going to be sharing about the courts of heaven for children so it'll be for adults too but I want to make it so simple that kids can understand it because I'm doing an anti-bullying program and I want kids to learn how to go to the courts of heaven the Word of God says that we come to the throne of grace to get what we need so we can go to heaven anytime we want, to the courts of heaven, to the throne of grace, anytime we need something, okay? I need God to hug me. I need deliverance in this, whatever. So it says that, that we should come boldly to the throne of grace in our time of need. So um, we can go and we can anytime we desire to. And as you train yourself and practice, it gets easier and easier. Um, so anyway, in one of my angel books, I want, to, I want to make it really easy, the protocol of going to the courts of heaven. But if you want to study it, there's some really great teachers out there. There's Robert Henderson, Eon Clayton, um, Terry Spencer, and uh, there's a few others. There's a really good book on the courts of heaven and grace. Courts of heaven and the courts of grace or something like that. A woman wrote it, and, and that's a really good one too. Oh, and Praying Medic. His books are really awesome. He's he's really a great a great teacher, um, and I love all of his books. So you can learn more about going to the courts of heaven. Um, anyway, I wanted to tell you one more thing. I have five books out right now on angels. Uh, one for children, which is very good for children. I really really like that one. Uh, number one has Cat Kerr's interview that I interviewed her. Uh, number two has. Um, just a bunch of general stuff. Number three was just published and it's going to be in print form later on today, but it's on Kindle right now. And that actually gives you the template or the, uh, how to command your host of heaven to get the things that you need according to the word of God. And also the other one that I published quite a few years ago and republished because I updated it and made it bigger, uh, is 80 facts about angels. I'm offering you guys any of my books that you want for free if you have an Amazon account and if you would give me a nice if you would give me a honest but not mean review um, I'll give you um, a, a PDF copy on Facebook Messenger 
and you can give me a review like in a week or two because they're easy reading they're kind of um, they're kind of like reference books you're going to want to go back to them again and again and refer to them so if you want want any of my especially those five books for free i will uh, put a message under here this gets really confusing just go to my facebook or profile page or Facebook message me and say that you would like to give me a review in exchange for a free book. And I'll do that. And in fact, anytime in the future, uh, my regular watchers, if you want to read one of my books for free, uh, let me know. Uh, they're free if you get Kindle Unlimited, but I'll send you a PDF file if you'll give me a, a, a review on Amazon. Uh, just PM message me or Robin Bremer at sbcglobal.net. Message me and I'll give you a free copy. Of, I have... 40, 40 plus books now uh, out. So um, if you want to read any of them and you you know you don't want to pay for them, <laughs> paying for them is nice. But if you don't want to pay for them, I'm willing to sew them into your life in exchange for a nice review. So just uh, a me Facebook message me or um, uh, you know. Don't do it underneath here because this gets really crazy. These videos go all over, thousands of views, and it's really hard to find you after you comment after the first viewing. Uh, so, oh, also, if you want to say a comment, if you want me to respond to your comment, you have to mention my name. You have to type in Robin Bremer because I will lose you. I get so many comments, and it's so hard to go back and find those comments and respond to you. So always mention my name if you want me to respond to your comment. So that's all I wanted to share. I just wanted to encourage you that you have to appropriate nothing by any means shall hurt you. You have to appropriate healing. You have to appropriate uh, salvation. It, it belongs to you. Uh, you have to take it. And if it's not happening, you need to go to the courts of the heaven and uh, bring it before the judge God and get it <laughs> in Jesus' name. So I love you all. Thanks for watching. Please share this with your social media sites and your friends and leave comments and like it and I appreciate it. And just go to Amazon and type Robin Bremer or just go to Google or Yahoo and type Robin Bremer. About the first 10 pages are my stuff, my blog, uh, my books because I it's like 40 some books now. So love you all. RobinBremer.net is the website and I will talk to you all later and I pray that you would just get the revelation of everything the blood of Jesus has for you and that you would realize that being a Christian is a supernatural relationship. It's a two-way street. It's not a bunch of rules. It's a relationship with somebody who loves you. Okay, talk to y'all later.